So spin in English means uh, a particle, for instance, or an object when it rotates around itself. So it's a particular example of what physicists call angular momentum. So angular momentum is the way physicists describe the rotation of physical objects. And there are two types, essentially, of angular momentum. One is when two objects rotate one around the other, like the Earth rotating around the Sun. So this is called orbital angular momentum, like the orbits of uh, planetary motions. But spin is different. Spin is rotation of an object on its own axis. So for instance, the Earth uh, turns around its own axis while it turns around the, the Sun. So this is what we mean by spin. But uh, strictly speaking, what I just said is just classical spin. While for elementary particles, you need to know what is quantum spin. Because elementary particles are quantum objects, which is something not so easy to explain in familiar terms, but um, which I, I will try to do my best. So maybe the, the best way to imagine uh, elementary particles of the, in modern terms is like uh, what physicists sometimes call quantum tops. In the sense tops, you know, are these objects that children make uh, turn uh, around themselves. Uh, and in a sense, well, uh, depending on what we mean by quantum, uh, elementary particles are some sort of infinitesimally small uh, um, quantum tops. Right? It's a bit hard to, to say more. So what physicists learn is that all element elementary particles are characterized, uh, at least their motion is characterized by two quantum numbers, we call them. One is maybe more familiar, the mass. So the mass of object, uh, and the other one, very important, is indeed the spin. Okay, so now we know that spin is a very important property of elementary particles. Then, what is the spin of the particles that we observe in, let's say, uh, like uh, the Large Hadron Collider, so the, the big experiments. So, what is well known for uh, some time now is that all the matter, so all objects we, that compose the matter around us, um, so we call them either leptons or quarks. So both of these types of particles that compose matter have a spin equal to one half, whatever that means. So, I mean, one way to describe what it means is that uh, you need to make not only one turn such, in such a way that the particle looks like itself, but you need, in a strange way, to make two turns around the particle, such that it looks like itself. So that's a very weird property, because, I mean, why do you need two turns and not only one? Um, so that's, uh, let's say, matter. And then something also very important in elementary particles are what physicists call gauge bosons. So these particles, they have uh, spin one, and what they do is that they transmit uh, they are mediator of the fundamental interactions. So for instance, you have gluons, maybe the more familiar photons that, made, that uh, transmit the information of uh, electromagnetic force, so light in, in practice. Um, and then you have also more exotic, which is a W and Z boson. Okay, so these are most of the particles that were known already for some time, 70s and so on. And very recently, uh, as you all know, I suppose, uh, the Higgs particle was discovered. Well, strictly speaking, it should be called uh, Broad Angler Higgs, because two Belgians have been forgotten in this uh, name, but that's another <laughs> sort of story, maybe. Um, okay, so the Higgs boson is the only particle which has a spin equal to zero. So which means that you can turn around itself, you make any uh, angle around uh, it, um, and it still looks the same. So this is uh, spin zero particle, while the gauge boson, I forgot to say, they have spin one, it means you should take, uh, should make one turn around such that it looks like itself. So this is a bit like an arrow, you need to take one turn such that the arrow points in the same direction. Okay, so still all this is uh, experimental physics, so what has been observed, 
Personally, me, I'm more a theoretician. So, we would like to go further, beyond what has been observed, which is what is called now the, the standard model of particles. So, what are the theories that have been proposed to go beyond the standard model? So, one important uh, missing piece in the standard model is gravity. So, gravity is described by general relativity since uh, the work of Einstein. Um, and if you try to describe gravity like we are used to describe elementary particles, then you are led to the idea that in principle, the, this fundamental interaction should also be described um, in terms of a sort of gauge boson, but the novelty, so we call it graviton, because of gravity, graviton, uh, but this uh, strange gauge boson should have a spin equal to 2, for complicated reasons, which means uh, that you should, uh, I mean, it's enough to do half turn such that the graviton looks like itself. So this is the property of gravitational waves but described in quantum terms. Okay, so in other words, if we want to quantize gravity, we need to describe particles, which are massless, actually, that's also a bit strange, because gravity propagates at the speed of light, so it should be massless, and uh, it should have a spin two, for some reason. And this is what physicists sometimes call nowadays the spin two barrier. Because if you try to describe it like we did for spin one particles, Everything blows up, I mean, everything explodes, all your equations uh, provide, provide for you infinities, you can, very difficult to make sense of it. And this is, of course, one of the major open theoretical uh, problem of, uh, of physics uh, of the 21st century, is to try to quantize gravity. Okay, so, since it's very difficult, you need new ideas. So one first new idea that has been proposed, uh, essentially in 76, was supergravity. So the idea was to supplement the graviton with a particle that really is also very exotic, which is a half integer spin, so more similar to the leptons and squarks, which is called the gravitino, like the neutrino, which is also a spin one half. It's a particular example of lepton. Okay, so the gravitino, as a spin equal to three half. And this means you need to make two thirds of a turn such that it looks like itself. Okay, so this is supergravity. It works, it has some success, but still, unfortunately, it's not complete. So supergravity, just as a side command, can be seen as a, an approximation of would-be super string theory at low energies. Okay, but string theory contains particles of even higher spin than two. So it seems that one possibility to solve the spin two barrier problem, so this major problem of quantizing gravity, that one intriguing possibility, theoretical and speculative, uh, but it works at the level of equations, uh, is that we need to go even beyond two. And more surprising is that once you go beyond two, you need all spins together. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, without any bound on the spin. So that's also very strange. Um, but it was very well at the level of equations, so that's already something. So uh, that's what string theory does in the sense that in the particles that uh, string theory predicts, you have indeed particles of higher spin, but in string theory, they have uh, their their massive particle. Their mass is not zero, not like the graviton, the photon, which propagates at the speed of light. So all these particles predicted by string theory, they go slower than the speed of light. But the experience that we have about um, fundamental theories like electroweak and uh, fundamental interaction, so due to this experience, uh, we know that to understand better uh, theory of fundamental particles, we need to probe it at higher and higher, always extremely high energies. And at very high energies, particles, they look like massless, so with zero mass. Um, so this suggested, uh, like in the 80s, 
the idea that maybe we should look at the extremely high so-called ultra-Planckian uh, energies of string theory, in which case all these higher spin particles are massless. Okay, so now we finally arrive <laughs> at my genuine uh, research, I mean it's a long history, uh, so higher spin gravity. So higher spin gravity is the name that we give to this generalized theory of gravity, so not only spin 2, but higher, um, so not only the graviton, but other particles uh, of spin greater than 2, but which are massless. So this theory is supposed to be a kind of a very exotic extension of general relativity, uh, which still remains very mysterious. We have some equations, but we don't even have all equations. I should say that Russian scientists have been really among the, the leaders and uh, among the, the very origin of this higher spin gravity. More precisely, the Lebedev Institute in Moscow. So it goes a long way, actually. I mean, the, the, the first people looking at kind of theories with particles of higher spin for completely different reasons was people like Tam, then about this gravitino Ginzburg, who was the, the student of TAM, also contributed to this, uh, this spin-free half, gravitino particle. And then, it's really like a dynasty, because the PhD student also of uh, Ginzburg was Efim Fratkin, who was really a, a quite impressive scientist, who also contributed to supergravity. But he also proposed, I mean, was one of the first to push forward, trying to build a theory of interacting particles of spin greater than 2, which are massless, so higher spin gravity. And, uh, well, he was not alone in this uh, big quest. He was also with um, his student, uh, Mikhail Vasiliev, who is still uh, now uh, at uh, FIAN in Nebedev Institute. And, uh, well, Fratkin also had other students who contributed to some uh, pieces of this, uh, I mean, some different direction, like Ruslan Metsaev, Arkady Zeitlin as well. Um, and, well, these are, let's say, uh, very well uh, recognized scientists, but there are also some younger group, uh, I mean, in Lebedev and people uh, that originate from this group that really do great job uh, in this. So, so for sure, Russia has a long tradition in this area, and that's why it's always uh, very important for us to, to um, I mean, in this higher spin community, uh, to be able to interact uh, and enjoy uh, Russia. Among the, the, the hope that we may still have, at least, at, let's say, at the personal level that I still have, uh, in this, uh, about this higher spin gravity, is that I think that the, among the two major problems that really remain to be solved, uh, one is presumably clarify, um, I mean, trying to clarify what is the underlying geometrical structure. Some understanding exists, but I think the, the big picture of the geometry is still, uh, is still missing. Because the, the great success of general relativity, of Einstein gravity, was that it could provide a um, geometric view on uh, gravity. So it was kind of unification of something which was a priori more of mathematical nature, invented by uh, Riemann and other great geometers, and really a very physical uh, property, the fact that all objects, whatever their mass, they fall exactly with the, in the same way, with the same acceleration. Uh, so something similar should exist for higher spin gravity, and it's presumably one of the key that miss to really open the door of uh, deeper understanding. And, uh, well, I mean, we, we, we all dream, I mean, people in the community, they all dream to, to go a step forward in this direction. So that's one very important point. And maybe a second point, which uh, really remains to, to be better understood, is how to go from massless particles to real world, where people actually they are massive, because we don't observe them. So if they exist, they should be very massive beyond 
the present day, the, the access of present day experiments. So, um, yeah, that, that's, so this is what we call spontaneous symmetry breaking. And uh, if you want, what is missing is something similar to what is called the broad angular Higgs mechanism uh, that I you remember the Higgs particle that I mentioned. So this piece is still missing also about higher spin gravity. And so before we will be able to make contact, not only with nice theoretical models, but more uh, concrete things, we, we need these two keys, presumably, to, to solve it.